In today's video, we're going to break down the differences between two absolutely glorious and incredible dog breeds, the Akita and the Alaskan Malamute. Welcome back to the Femrir Akita Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a behaviorist and I'm the founder here at FemrirCanineLeaders.com. And this channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the amazing Akita and how you can become a high-level canine leader that raises perfect Akita companions. So if you love the Akita as much as we do here at Femrir, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button and turning on the notification bell so that you never miss a future Akita video. So then, today we're going to look at the differences and similarities between the amazing Akita and the stunning Alaska Malamute. And let's dive right in and we'll start with the history of these fascinating breeds. Now, the Akita is an extremely ancient breed from Japan. In the Middle Ages, only the members of the ruling class were allowed to own Akitas. They used these strong and fierce dogs as hunting companions for large games such as elk, bear and wild boar. The Akitas would track these large animals, flush them out and keep them in check, long enough for the hunters to get there and then to kill the game. This task required not only courage, but also incredible levels of endurance. After the Second World War, US soldiers imported a number of these intrepid Japanese hunters into America, and after 1980, the breed's popularity spread to many other countries as well. Now then, let's look at the Alaska Malamute, a breed almost as ancient as the Akita. Their ancestors came from Siberia and entered Alaska by way of the Bering Strait. They were named after the indigenous tribe of the Malahunt, who used those as sled and hunting dogs. In many ways, these dogs were vital for the tribe's survival. They assisted the hunters in finding seals by pointing out blowholes. At the same time, these large, powerful dogs served the tribe by protecting it from ferocious polar bears. In the Second World War, Malamutes were used as search and rescue dogs, and in 2010, Alaska declared them as their official state dog. Okay then, so let's look at the difference in their looks. And in their outer appearance, these archaic Spitz-type dogs have many similarities. For example, their beautiful thick and plush double coats. Whilst breed standards allow pretty much every colour for the American Akita, the lighter and smaller Japanese Akitas only come in brindle, white, red fawn and sesame. The perhaps easiest way to tell these large breeds apart is their colouring. The Malamute always has white as its predominant colour, also in the face and on the legs. As well, the shape of the Japanese Akita's head is almost fox-like, while the Malamute is of distinct wolf-like appearance. The Malamute can come in various shades of grey, sable, seal, red and black, and like I say, all in combination with white. Both the Akita and the Malamute have erect, small, triangular shaped ears and curly bush tails. In the overall appearance, these dogs are of strong build, but without appearing overly bulky. Adult male Malamutes can be up to 66 centimetres tall at the withers, which is around 26 inches, females being slightly smaller, and males weighing 43 kilos, which is around 95 pounds. Now, Akita Inus, which are also known as Japanese Akitas, are slightly taller and heavier than Malamutes. Adult males stand at up to 70 centimetres tall, which is about 20 inches, and weigh around 50 kilos or 110 pounds, again with the females being a bit smaller and lighter. Their American cousins are usually taller and considerably heavier than the Japanese Akitas. Hey guys, very quickly, in case you didn't know, we have our perfect puppy programme. It's the programme that I designed myself as a canine behaviourist to help you guys become a high level canine leader yourself, and then how to be able to take your puppy from the second you bring it home all the way through to that dream of the perfect canine companion that you've always wanted. So if you want more information on that, there'll be a link down in the description box below. Thousands of people have now gone through that process to extremely high levels of success. So there's some testimonials you can go and check out. More information, it's all in the description box below, but let's get back into the video you were just watching. So then, what about the intelligence and trainability differences? Well, these incredible breeds are exceptionally smart, but at the same time, extremely stubborn and independent. In terms of trainability, they are right on the opposite end of the scale from the German Shepherd or the Labrador. Because of this strong independence, they absolutely require an experienced owner, a calm, consistent leader who knows how to train dogs that do not feel the need to please people. Now, this trait is deeply ingrained in the Malamute and can be traced back to its long history as sled dogs. 
Whilst humans could not tell whether or not the icy ground would carry the heavy sled or not, the dog's more keen instincts would warn them. Therefore, the decision to halt the sled or to carry on was ultimately left to the lead dogs. The Akita's independence is no less pronounced, but has different original reasons. As hunting dogs in ancient Japan, Akita's had to take on large and dangerous animals, and just like Malamutes, they needed to make their own decisions to do so without any guidance from their owners. And whilst this strong independence makes training the Akita and the Malamute quite difficult, it does pose a welcome challenge for the experienced canine leader that can really tackle a task like this. So let's look at their temperament differences. And because of their history as Arctic sled dogs and Japanese hunting dogs, these large working breeds are genetically predisposed to working in packs. However, today's Malamutes and Akitas have the tendency to be quite aggressive towards other canines, especially towards members of the same sex. They can also develop aggressive behavior towards humans, which is why calm, consistent leadership is so crucial for both breeds and is why another reason that they're not suitable for inexperienced owners. Now neither the Akita nor the Alaska Malamute are beginner's dogs and they absolutely do require firm but fair guidance as well as tons of socialization. However in the hands of a competent canine leader these breeds can become good family dogs who behave well around children. However they are not the best choice for families with small or younger children. Malamutes tend to be more patient with little humans than the regal Akitas with their almost cat-like aloofness. Akitas are not very tolerant of children or other dogs, especially suddenly hugging them or jumping on top of them. Therefore, caution is advised and owners should never leave their dog and their child to play together unattended. Now, in the house, both breeds are gentle, quiet and settled. These dogs are very fond of their humans and deeply, deeply loyal. Whilst the Keaters are known as superb natural guard dogs, Malamutes are said to be rather unreliable in that regard. However, as most breeds, they can be taught to sound an alarm whenever appropriate. Okay then, so let's talk about exercise and grooming differences between these two breeds. And while it's usually unproblematic in the house, these beautiful Spitz-like breeds can get destructive when not exercised enough. Because of their origins as sled dogs and hunters used to run for hours, Malamutes and Akitas need a lot of exercise. Normal walks will not satisfy these large athletes. Apart from regular long walks, they need vigorous runs off leash and greatly benefit from a large secure fenced area like a garden or backyard. These breeds have an immensely natural prey drive and will not hesitate to give chase to cats, rabbits and even wild boar or deer when given the chance. Now, to keep both of their luxurious coats clean and shiny and to minimise shedding, regular brushing is needed for both of these dogs. A pin brush, paddle brush, as well as a comb with a wide set teeth are the best tools to use for their rich coats. The Akita is an especially clean breed and is known to groom itself pretty much like a cat. So I hope you enjoyed that quick breakdown of these two absolutely fascinating dog breeds that we love here at Fenrir. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And remember, we've got two new videos coming here to this channel every single week. So if you want to see more of those, hit subscribe, turn on the notification bell, because I can't wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Akita Show.